as we all know politicians when they campaign they make promises to people and after they get elected we kind of forget those promises that they made to us so today i want to go through dr william ruto's manifesto and see what he has there that would be of interest to you and your fashion brand. I, William Samoei Ruto, in full realization of the high calling I assume as president of Kenya. Hello, my name is Kaiza, and if you're new here, welcome to <laughs> Hi, welcome to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Kaiza, and if you're looking to grow and maximize your African fashion business, this is the place to be and today it's a little bit different because it's also a little bit political because Kenya just had just had an election and the country is ushering in a new president so congratulations to the dr. William Ruto who is the fifth president of the United <laughs> the fifth president of the Republic of Kenya. Today's video is going to be talking about his manifesto and what it means for your fashion business. As we already know, Kenya has a very large informal sector. So the majority of people in Kenya, the majority of working class people work in an informal area of the economy. So I think the number that's out there is around 85% of people work in the informal sector. And this sector also includes the fashion industries because a lot of entrepreneurs who operate within the fashion industry are either not really registered and the industry itself is not really standardized or there's no standardization within the industry to make it legit or to make it part of the formal sector of the in of the economy and so dr ruto has some points in his manifesto that he's addressing directly to those in the creative sector and in the informal sector of the economy so the first thing that drew me to the manifesto is the creative economy kenya has a highly talented youth and on a diverse spectrum of creative work including music, theater, graphic design, digital animation, cr fashion and craft, among others. The digital revolution buttressed by Kenya's good connectivity has opened up opportunities for this sector to be a significant economic actor in its own right. So the cre already this government, this incoming government is putting an emphasis on the creative sector of the economy. And so, with Kenya Kwanza commitment, they are going to work with stakeholders to expand the space uh, for creativity, including freedom of expression and protection of intellectual property rights. This is very important for those who are fashion designers because when you put your own original creation out there, you want to make sure that nobody also comes and steals your intellectual property because this is your the work of your creativity so the fact that this government is putting um is going to put measures in place to make sure that people in the creative sector are protected and their rights and their the property <laughs> is protected is very important and very hopeful the next point he says the mainstream arts and culture infrastructure that is theater music halls art galleries into the infrastructure development program and identify dedicated streams of resources for the development under the arts and crafts there is one here that i think you would find interesting is like arts and crafts the government was to develop a government powered arts and craft industry information portal the portal will help in listing different players in the industry and market their products so the uh, promoting arts and crafts galleries leveraging on existing public entities and institutions including our embassies abroad so here you're seeing arts and crafts which i'm hoping also includes fashion products um because arts and crafts are different because when you talk about arts and crafts i'm thinking beadwork and paintings but not necessarily apparel which also i think should be included within this because after arts and crafts they have film and music so i think 
um, there is they should expand wider within this arts and crafts um, economy or creative economy to further explain what they're going to do with the fashion industry and the textile industry which I guess that's manufacturing textile is more manufacturing than creative but there are some graphic designers who work in the fashion and manufacturing side so i think there is a bridge there that needs connection or there's there's a need of a bridge that the the support in the creative sector should also reflect also in the fashion and apparel uh, sector but also there's something interesting here there's a financial commitment established a similar financing framework as proposed for sports so i'll find out for sports and i'll put the amount of num the number of shillings that this government is going to dedicate towards this part of the manifesto upon further research i found that within a hundred days the new administration is looking to establish a high level of expert task force to identify sustainable sources of sports funding consideration should be given to a national lottery tax incentives for corporate sponsorships, a dedicated or ring fest tax, and public to private partnership framework for infrastructure development. So what this government is proposing is for creative ways of funding this sector and uh, this part of the agenda. So unlike the other priorities listed in this agenda, there are no specific financial commitments made when it came to the creative sector of the economy and their plan for it. The government is looking to improve the digital superhighway. So basically making internet available and accessible for the majority of the people in the country. This is important because it will help you run your business online, which is where many, if not most of the businesses are migrating to. So having that digital infrastructure to make it easier for you to be on social media, to make it cheaper <laughs> to be on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, or wherever you're going to conduct your business. Uh, so I think this is important because again, the world is going towards the digital age. So I think the more accessible digital infrastructure is, or the more accessible internet is, the better it is going to be for these small entrepreneurs, I mean, or these uh, small to medium, or even micro entrepreneurs that are in the fashion industry. So this is something that you want to keep an eye on with the commitment to universal broadband availability throughout the country within five years. So he's saying by the end of his first term, he wants to have universal broadband and increase the broadband connectivity across the country by construction of over 100,000 kilometers of national fiber optic connective network. So basically they're saying they want to have microfiber connectivity even in the rural areas where you'll have good internet. I mean, Kenyan internet is pretty good already, so if they're going to expand that, that's going to be even better for many of the small businesses. Enhance government service delivery through digitization and automatic digitization and automatic <laughs> enhanced government service delivery through digitization <laughs> and automation of all government critical processes and make available 80 percent of government services online also kenya has been making and migrating a lot of their services the government services online so this is also very promising to be able i think you can already like get your business license online through e-citizen so i think what he's saying here is just going to improve that and establish africa regional hub and promote development software export so this is all about software and um info ict so information technology with that said that means the internet is going to be better and they're going to have so far they've said they're going to make emphasis on the creative economy and support people in the creative sector of the economy. The second point they've just said is that they're going to improve the digital infrastructure and the connectivity of the country. So basically making going online cheaper for everyone. Also, those two things so far sound good for your fashion business. 
let's see what the third thing I glimpsed from this manifesto and what it might do for your business. The third, which is I think the most important one, the, the point of transforming the micro, small and medium enterprise or MSME economy. So basically what they're saying, they want to transform the small economies where people are doing their day-to-day -day trading. If you're a mamamboga in the market, if you're a tailor, which I'm specifically talking to tailors in this video and fashion producers and designers, basically. Um, if you are in this small, micro, medium <laughs> enterprise, they're looking to end the criminalization of work. We will enact a right to work law, making trading licenses and provision of a trading location and entitlement to every citizen who applies. So basically they're saying, if you apply to get a license or a trading, a trading license or location, that is something that is within your right as a citizen to apply and get that provided for you. We will work with county governments to provide one street trading premises for every 50 urban residents with a view to increase average daily income of informal traders by 200 shillings. How I am understanding this is that they are aiming to work with the county government to provide at least one duka, one store, one kibanda, one kiosk per 50 urban residents. So per 50 people who live in an urban area, they're planning to have one trading post so that they can increase the income, the average daily income of informal traders by 200 shillings. If I'm understanding that correctly. If I'm not, please let me know in the comment section below because I think that's what they mean here. It's like they want to make sure there is spaces for every few residents, so in here they're saying 50. Every 50 people, they want to have make sure there's a place where they can go and trade to improve daily income of informal traders by 200 shillings, which is which makes a big difference, by the way. So for their second point for taxation, I think this is very important because what they're saying, they're trying to make it very easy for people to report on their taxes and to make it look like the one in the United States, which is similar to the United States Reduction of Paperwork Act, and which ensures no business spends more than four person hours a month on tax re regulatory compliance. So basically they are trying to make it easy for you to pay your taxes and easy and faster basically to make, to pay taxes. The third point for this SME or S MSME uh, economy is to access, access to finance, where this government will commit to 50 million shillings. Uh, oh, to, <laughs> I stand corrected, where the government will commit to 50 billion shillings a year to provide MSMEs, that is micro, small and medium enterprises, in Kenya with 100% 100% access to affordable finance through SACO, venture capital, equity fund and long-term debt for startups and growth oriented SMEs. So basically, I don't think they're saying they're going to be giving people money here. We will commit 50 billion a year to provide SMEs with 100% access to affordable finance. So you're going to spend money that's 50 billion shillings with a B to provide access, but not necessarily giving money because this is access through SACOs, venture capital. These are all private. Venture capital is private. Equity funds also private. Long-term debt for startups. Maybe long-term debt um, might be something the government might be into, like lending people, lending businesses, money but the other few that they have mentioned here these are private entities giving financial um, help to small businesses but the government somehow is going to be spending 50 billion shillings on this so that's a little bit confusing for me i will need to look into it and if you have any information on that please let me know um, but i think i need to do a follow-up with this one and the fourth point is the infrastructure and capacity building where they will establish MSME business development center in every ward 
and an industrial park and business incubation center in every TVET institution. Their total commitment, financial commitment for the financial year of 2022-2023 to 2026-2027. So basically, in the five years this government is going to be in power, they are committing 250 billion shillings towards transforming the micro, small, and medium enterprises in Kenya. So 50, 250 billion shillings translates to 50 billion a year towards this endeavor. But I do not see how they plan on doing this in this particular manifesto. I might have to do a little bit more digging because so far what they're saying is they're going to use that 50 billion per year to provide MSMEs with 100% access to affordable finance through circles. So 100% access is not the same as actually funding these things. Saying that you're providing access is saying I'm going to give you tips on where to find funding, but also spend 50 billion shillings a year to do this. I find a little confusing and I think I might need a little bit more of to do a little bit more digging and see exactly how they're going to be spending this money to transform these small businesses. Because um, the way they're explaining it here does not really make sense to me if you're going to provide access but then rely on circles and venture capital and equity funds, long-term debt to do this. Um, because also these circles, <clears throat> these circles, venture capital, equity funds, they all will be looking to get their money back. They all will be looking, if they're lending you money, they'll be looking for, like equity means they'll be looking to own a part of your business. Um, venture capital, they will be looking to make that money back and some. So all these solutions that they're putting up here, it means that tailors or fashion producers or small businesses will have to kind of give back some of this money or all of it and some. So I'm trying to figure out how the government exactly is planning on helping that if it means the small businesses incurring a whole lot of debt. Um, so I find that a little bit confusing. But all in all, this manifesto sounds like they're trying to raise the economy from the bottom up, which is a bottom up approach. From the beginning of the manifesto, they're saying they're, they're trying to take a bottom up approach where they're trying to raise everybody from the bottom up and make sure the economy is working for everyone. However, I am still finding more questions than answers as I read through this and I'm hoping as, the, as time goes on, I will be able to find more for you. All in all, it's a promising manifesto. It's a promising promise that the new government is making here. Um, but I think it's up to us to hold them accountable and make sure that they deliver on these promises and that we're not back at this juncture in the next five years. After five years, we still don't have anything to show for it for as far as our small businesses are concerned. So with that said, um, I hope that you found some <laughs> value in this video, in this discussion with the manifesto that as far as the new government is concerned. If you have any questions, comments, please don't shy away from engaging <laughs> in the comment section below. Um, until next time, my name is Kaiza and I hope to see you then. Bye.